Welcome to Train Signal. This is the VMware View 5.0 Essentials Training. Welcome to the first lesson, Getting Started with VMware View 5 Essentials Training. In this first lesson, we'll introduce you to the instructors for the course and talk a little bit about the content of the course and what VMware View will do for you. Let's start with a quick introduction about myself, where I'll explain a little bit about myself and my experience and hopefully you'll feel comfortable spending some time with me on this course. That's me. I'm Brian Knutson. You can find me out on the web at either my blog or my Twitter account. I hold just about every certification that VMware offers, including VCPs from versions 2, 3, and 4, the VCAP DCA and VCAP DCD, which are VMware's advanced certifications for both administration and design, the VTSP, which is VMware's technical sales professional certification, and both the VCADT and VCPDT, which are two certifications around VMware View, both of which I achieved during the beta phases of the certifications. I've also attained my MCI TP 2008 Enterprise Administration certification from VMware, and a Master ASC High Availability and Clustering Solutions certification from HP, which covers the ProLiant line, along with a little bit of HP networking and storage. So a little bit about my experience with VMware View. I started working with VMware Technologies back in 2004, during the days of ESX 2.5. At this time, I started to design and implement a server consolidation infrastructure for the company I was working for at the time. A few years later, when we had a stable and robust server virtualization infrastructure, I was asked if we could deploy desktops on that infrastructure as well. That became my very first VDI project, and was done well before VDI was a buzzword or something that VMware realized that they could capitalize on. A few years after that, I started working for a VMware partner, and my very first project with the company was to implement VMware VDM, which is the predecessor to VMware View. Since then, I've done well over a dozen different VMware View implementations for customers, as well as several implementations in my own lab. This experience I have with VMware View led TrainSignal to entrust me with the VMware View 4.5 administration course. The VMware View 5 Essentials Training is intended to be an updated version of that course. To finish up, there are a couple of additional accomplishments that I'd like to point out. I've been named a VMware V Expert for the first three years of the program. Think of the V Expert program as something similar to Microsoft's MVP and Citrix's CVP programs. It's a recognition for contributions made by individuals to the community at large. I've also sat several times on VMware's Partner Technical Advisory Board where VMware works with a small set of the partners on futures of their products. As I mentioned before, I created TrainSignal's original VMware View 4.5 training course, but this time I'm bringing along a friend of mine, Lane Leverett. Lane, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Thanks for that great introduction, Brian. Like Brian said, my name is Lane Leverett. That's me up there in the upper right-hand corner. And hope that I can uh, be of some help to you in this course as we go looking at View 5 Essentials. Now to start off with me, I've been in IT for the past 14 years, working in both storage, networking, and uh, server administration work. But the last six years of it has been primarily focused on server virtualization and specifically VMware solutions. I, like Brian, hold a number of VMware certifications. And uh, similar to Brian, we hold about the same number of VMware credentials, just about everyone. He's got one that I don't have. Uh, uh, the VCAP DCA, so that's my only one that I'm missing currently. But like Brian, I've also got uh, the VCA desktop and VCP desktop uh, certifications, which I also went through the beta programs for. I also hold a couple of Microsoft uh, MCSE certifications from NT4, Windows 2000, and Windows 2003. And I'm also certified with Cisco uh, CCNA uh, certification, and also their UCS support and design certification as well for their compute systems. Currently I'm working at uh, ENS, which is based out of Sacramento, California, as the Director of Cloud and Commercial Services. Um, actually new into this role and we're actually going to be implementing solutions for uh, both private and hybrid and public clouds to enable folks to be able to use vCloud Director as well as desktop solutions in a cloud environment. So desktop is really near and dear to my heart because I believe it's a real enabler for the enterprise. I'm excited to see some of the things that are coming out here in the very near future around desktop virtualization. 
I've also been on both the customer side and the consulting side of IT, so I know what it's like to be in both situations. And so when I approach things as a consultant, um, I really have that same vantage point of, of what it's like to be the, the server or network admin and, and what it's like to be in those shoes. And so I really try to see myself and focus myself as an enabler and being able to help enterprises and customers more utilize their investment in IT and specifically with server and desktop virtualization. And I also have a passion for continuous improvement. That's one of the primary reasons that I'm working with Train Signal here is I really am involved in education, both for myself personally and for my customers as well. And I have a real heart for that. So I really hope that this course will be a, a help to you as you make it through the View 5 Essentials training and really uh, hope that that can give you some benefit. I look forward to talking to you more throughout the course. Back to you, Brian. Thanks, Lane. I look forward to doing this course with you this time around. Let's talk about the purpose of this training series. It is an updated version of the VMware View Administration training, but there are a few key differences. First of all, our primary concentration is providing you the knowledge to successfully implement a View 5 infrastructure, to walk you through all the different options, when you would choose them, and how to implement them. We'll also provide some basic guidance for managing the View 5 infrastructure once you've got it implemented. This won't be a complete training series on this management, but it should be enough to get you going for the basics. If you're interested in more advanced management courses from TrainSignal, let us know. This is an area of interest we have in creating more courses for that specific area. Since Lane and I both work for value-added resellers and have done several VIEW projects each, the approach we're taking with this course is treating you as if you were a customer that we were sitting with doing an implementation for walking you through the whole process and explaining all the different choices along the way. A secondary objective we have is to help prepare you for some of the topics covered on the VMware desktop certifications, namely the VCADT, VCPDT, and VCAPDT certifications. A key difference between the View 4 administration training and the View 5 essentials training is that we've taken less of a focus on the certification topics. This won't be a complete guide to those certifications but should provide a good solid base to prepare for it. To help you understand the concepts of this view infrastructure, we're going to put all of our topics, and particularly our demonstrations, into the context of a real world scenario so that you can understand the reasoning behind some of the decisions we'll make. At the end of each lesson, we'll provide you links to resources that Lane and I find useful in daily administration and implementation to help guide you to additional information or for you to use as a reference when our videos aren't available to you. The documents we refer you to are documents that we've used to develop this course and use on projects while implementing VIEW. So if you're not familiar with the term VDI, I want to quickly explain to you the vision of a virtual desktop infrastructure. The first thing you have to understand is that it truly is a major shift in the way that you manage your desktop infrastructure, even more so than the shift that happened when moving from physical servers to virtual servers. The concept is to really abstract and separate out the different layers that make up a user's desktop experience. The first step is separating the hardware from the operating system, which we use VMware vSphere for. Next, we want to separate out the application from the operating system. This is accomplished using application virtualization technologies like VMware ThinApp, Citrix ZenApp, or Microsoft AppV, all of which have perfectly legitimate use cases within a view infrastructure. Finally, we want to separate out the user identity and user data from each other and from the operating system. This abstraction truly opens up the power of a virtual desktop infrastructure and helps us to create an infrastructure that can support a flexible, self-serviced, and automated desktop environment that we can centralize in the data center, which provides us many advantages, including securing your data completely within the data center, eliminating the risk of lost laptops and USB drives and also providing better resource and power utilization by concentrating all the computing into a smaller number of more efficient devices, namely servers instead of distributed desktops. And for those of you who understand the concepts of cloud computing, particularly on the infrastructure side, you'll notice a lot of those keywords are words that are used to describe a cloud infrastructure. And I oftentimes do refer to VDI as one of the very first legitimate infrastructure cloud offerings that hit the market. By centralizing your desktops into the data center, 
VDI actually becomes a subset of the server-based computing model. The features that really stand out are the fact that the desktops are primarily stored and executed in the data center, providing us the benefits of security and better resource utilization. It also provides us a consistent user experience, no matter what device we're accessing it from or what location we're accessing it from. Whether I'm accessing my desktop from my desk, from a laptop in a conference room, from my home computer, or from my tablet sitting on the beach, the user experience should be similar and look as if I'm sitting in front of the same device each time. I want to take a quick minute now and show you what a VDI solution looks like from the end user's perspective. This machine that we're looking at right now could be a thin client or it could be a user's desktop. Either way, the important thing is that they have access to the VMware View client. By launching this client, the first thing that they'll have the option to do is to define the connection server. This is the computer that's hosting the view environment. We'll connect to that, except the fact that we're using a non-trusted SSL certificate. Then we can log in as one of our users. In this case, we'll log in as Louisa. This is actual authentication to our Active Directory environment. Now we're given a list of the different pools that we have access to. In Louisa's case, she only has one. If a user is entitled to multiple desktops, they get multiple selections here. We can now connect to our desktop. Our user now has a desktop that they're accessing remotely. Now let's take a look at the admin interface for VMware View. So instantly after logging into View Administrator, you can see lots of information about the health of the environment. When clicking on this pools inventory, you can see all the desktop pools that have been created within this infrastructure. Clicking on the desktops inventory shows us all the desktops that have been created through all those pools. These are the actual desktops that users can connect to remotely in order to access their desktop functionality. So what do we expect you to know going into this course? First of all, you should have a basic understanding of what a virtual machine is and how vSphere manages those virtual machines. We don't expect you to be a long-term virtual infrastructure administrator, but definitely need to know the concepts and some of the basic mechanics of how they work. You'll need to know some stuff about Active Directory, specifically OU structure and group policy implementations. You don't need to have your MCITP we won't be creating any Active Directory infrastructure in this course, but we will be creating OUs and group policies and applying them in ways that make sense. You need to have a basic understanding of networking. Since we'll talk about how all the different pieces of view connect to one another, you also need to know some concepts of desktop management. Now given that this is a major shift from traditional desktop management, some of your preconceived concepts may need to be thrown out, but you'll definitely need to know some of the basic implementations of a desktop like printing and user management. Now let's do a quick overview of the topics that we'll cover in this course. After a couple of short lessons setting the stage for our lab and our course scenario, Lane's going to jump in and talk about the different components that make up a view infrastructure and how to license it. Then he'll dive in and walk you through the steps of the installation of view, what order things need to be done in, and actually show you the whole process. He'll then show you how to configure and maintain the desktop pools that exist within that infrastructure. After that, I'll be back to show you how to separate out the user profile and data from the operating system. Then I'll discuss how to deal with one of the most dreaded topics of desktop management and have you introduces some unique challenges and solutions around printing. 
Then I'll go over how to separate the applications out from the operating system, which will complete our entire goal of abstracting out all the different pieces of a user desktop. After that, Lane will be back to talk about monitoring and troubleshooting and how those are accomplished within our view infrastructure. That's a quick overview of the course and what we're hoping to accomplish. But before we jump into the next lesson, let's cover a few strategies on making the most out of this course. The lessons can be viewed in any order, and they do work sequentially to walk you through the entire process. So if you're looking to build your view infrastructure from the ground up, go through each lesson one at a time, and we'll walk you through the entire process of putting together a basic view infrastructure. There are a few pieces of the view infrastructure that we won't cover completely, like view local mode, that may be useful in some specific use cases, but usually aren't needed for most view infrastructures initially. We're going to lump those together in a more advanced view course later on. Alternatively, if you're familiar with view already, have an infrastructure you want to play with, or are studying for one of the view certifications, feel free to jump directly to topics that you want to know more about. The lessons generally do build on one another, and the infrastructure is built from one lesson to the next. But most of the lessons can stand alone, and the concepts that are discussed in them should be complete within each individual lesson. And if not, we'll let you know which lessons you need to go back to. In the next lesson, I'll walk you through our core scenario that we'll use as a framework for discussing real-world examples of the view infrastructure. All the labs that we're going to conduct in each of our lessons will be put into this framework to help them make the most real-world sense to you and help solidify the concepts that we discuss in the lecture portion of each lesson. As we discuss the core scenarios, consider your own environment for each lesson. Whether you're preparing for a view implementation or in the midst of implementing it, hopefully we'll provide enough information and framework for you to be able to apply these concepts for your specific use cases. Since the lessons are provided to help you build out a complete view infrastructure, we'd encourage you to follow along in our demonstrations. The lesson after the course scenario will lay out our lab infrastructure that we're going to be working within, which will allow you to be able to create your own lab infrastructure that matches ours, so you can follow along with each of our demonstrations, so you can build out your own lab infrastructure for learning or experimenting or studying for the VUE desktop exams. And I don't think Lane or I have ever worked with a customer who didn't have questions beyond our normal implementation. So if you have any questions or need clarifications on any of the topics we discuss, here are a few ways to get some answers. First of all, review the supporting resources that we provide you. As I said before, these are documents that we will regularly refer to, even as view experts. Engage the VMware community, which is generally regarded as one of the best in the IT industry. Start by searching for your specific question or issue, both directly on VMware's site and through Google to hit some of the blogs that may have already answered these questions as well. If you can't find a specific answer, ask one of the authors of the blogs, or better yet, Ask it in the VMware communities, where you're likely to find a good answer, or at least a group of people who are willing to help you figure it out. By asking on the community, your question will also be available for other people who may have the same question. If you have any questions or concerns about this course, please provide us feedback, both on the course specifically, or generally topics that you'd like us to cover in future lessons. You can also contact me directly through either my blog or my Twitter account. And finally, just feel free to ask us or ask one of the other experts out in the community. We'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. So that's what this course is going to look like. I really hope you enjoy it and gain a lot from it. We'll see you in the next lesson.